Good evening. Thanks for being here. It's time for us to get started with our Wednesday night services, and we are glad that you're here. I know some folks join us online as well, and we appreciate that also. As we get started, I do have a couple of updates for you on our prayer list. We want to extend our sympathy to Bill Newman and his family on the loss of Bill's 27-year-old nephew, Eric Newman. Please keep that family in your prayers. And Shalise Lennon is recovering from ankle surgery. The Lennons have been with us for a little while now, but she is at home recovering from ankle surgery. It's going well, but she just asked if we'd remember her in our prayers. Upcoming activities on April the 30th, there's going to be a field day for our Elements families. That'll be from 6 to 8 p.m. That is pre-K to fifth grade kids and their families. It'll be at the Zion Road property. We are in need of several of the pop-up canopies to provide some shade at that event. If you've got one of those uh, that we could use, see Josh or Emily and let them know that. Those are all the announcements that I've got. No, that's not. There's one more. There will be an elders and deacons and preachers meeting this Sunday. Elders will meet at 4. Deacons will join them at 5. So uh, do put that on your calendars for our elders and deacons. Leading us in our services tonight, Chad McPherson has our opening prayer. Jesse Taps, our song leader. I've got our devotional, and Josh Terry has our closing prayer. If there's nothing further, Jesse, let's start our Devo. for today. Thank you for all the blessings that surround us each and every day that you give us. Father, we are thankful for this avenue of prayer. We're able to come to you and you hear our, our concerns anytime that we want, Father, and we're extraordinarily grateful for that, and oftentimes that's something we, we so often take for granted. Father, we're thankful for your for the Bible, we're thankful for your word, and we're thankful for opportunities like this that we can come together as like-minded Christians, just try to grow our knowledge, to grow our faith, and, and hopefully introduce other people to you. We're, we're so thankful for the example that Jesus gives us in living a, a leading a perfect example, and we pray, Lord, that we can continue to pursue that path, continue to pursue ways to grow and introduce more people to you. Father, we're mindful of those that can't be with us tonight, um, whether it's by illness, uh, by... Uh, other difficult challenges in life, loss of, of loved ones. We're just mindful of those people and the, the prayers that they are in need of at this time. And Lord, you know their concerns, you know their worries, you know their fears better than we ever could. And we would ask, and it be our prayer, that they can be comforted and that we can have opportunities to help them and accept that opportunity. Father, we pray that we'll be useful in our time together tonight. We pray that we can all benefit from our time together. We pray that you'll be with our teachers and that that they can articulate your word in a, in a clear and, and enjoyable way for, for us to learn from. And we pray, Father, that you'll continue to be with us as a church body. And we pray that we can continue to, to grow in knowledge and number and, um, and continue to just grow the, the mission of loving other people. Thank you for all that you do, Lord. Um, thank you for, again, hearing our prayers. And please be with us tonight, and please forgive us of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
want you to imagine just for a moment that uh, let's say it's a scene at our house and I've just made a, a nice cup of hot coffee and I pick up my cup of hot coffee and, and turn around kind of quick with it and Will is standing right there. And, and as Will moves, he bumps my arm and coffee sloshes everywhere and, and Heather's looking at that and she says, David, why did you spill coffee? I said, well, it's Will's fault. He hit my elbow. And Will says, uh uh, it's your fault because you turned around too fast. You know, neither one of us are right. Why did I spill coffee on the floor? Because there was coffee in my cup. That's why I spilled coffee on the floor. You see, what's in us is what spills out of us. If I'd have had a cup of milk, I'd have spilled milk. If I'd had a cup of water, I'd have spilled water. I spilled coffee because that's what was in my cup. One of the things we love in Henderson is this picture right here. It is an iconic uh, photo spot in all of Henderson, and we love to drive by there. The kids love to drive by the river. Heather and I enjoy eating lunch there. And sunset is particularly beautiful. And if we're driving home sometime and we just happen to look up and the sun is going down, one of us is going to say, oh, look, 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 let's go drive by the river. And we'll take off and take the long way home and just enjoy seeing sunset on the river. And we do that not because it's our first sunset, not because we've never seen it before, but we do that because when one of us notices the sunset and appreciates it and says something about it, it makes all of us notice it and appreciate it. And we don't ever get tired of seeing that. As I thought about that, I was reminded of what Scripture says about thankfulness because a heart that's thankful overflows with thankfulness. Whatever's in our heart overflows out of us just like that cup of coffee. And when we practice thankfulness, it overflows and it impacts others around us. It is amazing how often scripture reminds us to be thankful. Psalm 106 verse 1 says, Praise the Lord, O give thanks to the Lord, for he's good. His mercy endures forever. It doesn't say give thanks to the Lord because everything is working out good. It doesn't say give thanks to the Lord because you got your way today. It says give thanks to the Lord because the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. We give thanks to God because of who he is. Not because our circumstances, not because everything goes the way we want it to. Paul said it this way in Colossians chapter 2, 6 and 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you've been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Paul says one of the marks of Christian maturity is thanksgiving, that praise is a byproduct of presence. When we're in Christ and Christ is in us, when he fills us up, gratitude overflows. As we abide in him and grow, one of the fruits we'll bear is that gratitude. And when it overflows in us, it'll impact others. Unless we do something to choke it out. You know, praise isn't the only thing that overflows. Gratitude isn't the only thing that can come out of our life. We all overflow with something. We can overflow with greed. I always want more. Never have enough. I always want the newest, the latest. Nothing's ever good enough. We can overflow with griping, complaining about it, blaming other people for our faults and our problems. But God wants us to overflow with gratitude. It really grounds us. In whatever moment we're in, in whatever we're facing, Thanksgiving reminds us to just stop and remember the fact we're blessed. We're really blessed. It guards our heart against complaining and bitterness and being consumed by what ultimately turns out to be small things in life. And the truth is, the best way to, to pass on gratitude is to possess gratitude. To fill your cup up with gratitude until it overflows to those around you. Parents, you want to teach your kids gratitude? Be grateful. You want to create gratitude, a culture of gratitude at work? Be grateful. You want your friends to, to express thanks more often? Be grateful. And if you're a Christian, this isn't an option. This is a command. It's built into the process of discipleship. We know that life is short and eternity is forever. The pandemic reminded us to enjoy every moment. Sometimes it's the little things. Just the fact that we get a chance to walk around the block together, to take a car ride, to go to dinner together, to have an evening with friends, or maybe even... Enjoy a sunset. But of all the things we're grateful for as Christians, we're grateful for who God is and what he's done for us, for Jesus, for sending him for our sins. We model thankfulness when we're content with what we have. 
Gratitude grows when we express it, no matter what we're facing, what we think we have or what we think we don't have. If Jesus is in your life, you've got a reason to be thankful every day. We've already been given far more than we deserve. So believe it, practice it, preach it. Fill your life up with gratitude so that it overflows onto others. And you know, as we talk about this gratitude that we find in Christ, it's a good time to just stop and say tonight, if you need the Lord in your life as Savior, if you need to become a Christian, you can do that. Repent of your sins and confess your faith in Jesus as the Son of God. You can be baptized to have your sins washed away. And trust me, your life will change and God will begin to fill your heart with gratitude. Or maybe you're a child of God, but you need to get your heart right with God. Tonight we can be thankful because God allows us the opportunity to be right with him. If you need to make your life right with God, if we can help you, won't you come right now as we stand and sing? I have found here love and mercy. Father, thank you for the opportunity tonight to come together and to study your word. We pray that you be with our teachers, that you allow them to have a ready recollection of what they've prepared for tonight. We ask that you be with the students and that you have their hearts open to your word so that it may impact them and, and help them to, to learn more about you, God. We ask tonight that you be with those that are hurting and uh, sad, Lord. We ask that you uh, give them joy and gladness. God, we ask that you uh, lift up those that are sick and hurting. Uh, we pray that you be with our soldiers, and we ask that you watch over each and every one of us. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. All our classes are meeting in the...